Hey, what's going on? Causey here. Welcome to another Cause in Effect Photoshop challenge. It's been a while since we've done one of these, and this one is a particularly special Photoshop challenge in that uh, Jurassic World Dominion comes out today, the date of the release of this video, which is June 10th across North America and the world, and I am super excited about this one. And it got me thinking about the last time I was this excited about a Jurassic Park or Jurassic World movie. And of course, I'm talking about when they rebooted the se uh, series initially, there were talks about a hybrid dinosaur, all this stuff for the first Jurassic World movie with Chris Pratt. So in that time, I decided to do a Photoshop challenge where I created what I thought would be the ultimate dinosaur hybrid. And it turned out to be one of my favorite videos, even years later, I think it's been four or five years since we did that one. So. Uh, thinking about how much I enjoyed doing that video with Dominion coming out, I thought we would do the same thing. Now, I know there's no hybrids in Dominion, but that being said, there are definitely some really cool creatures, and I thought this was a great opportunity to see if we can uh, combine them all together, uh, including some of uh, some of the newer members of the franchise that are going to be released in this movie. So, enough talking. I got my Jurassic Park shirt on, uh, so let's just dive right into it and see how this Photoshop turned out. All right, so right away you can see we got a bunch of Jurassic World, Jurassic Park dinosaurs here, starting with the Sinoceratops, this big green Triceratops looking creature. And they're a little bit different uh, than the regular uh, Triceratops, but we'll get into that. But the one I'm really excited for here is the Therizinosaurus, which is a new entry into the franchise. Really excited to see this one on the screen. I like the design direction they took in this one. They gave it the feathers, which are pretty iconic for the animal. Then we've got the Quetzalcoatl, which I'm pretty sure I'm saying right, and the Pterodon. And the Pterodon's mainly there just in case I couldn't get the Quetzal's wings to work out, but it's a huge flyer. It's kind of disputed whether it flew or not, but then we got the Ankylosaurus. I also included a smaller one for this one. I wasn't sure how I was gonna implement it, um, but then we've got the main star here, the Brachiosaurus, and then the Gallimimus. Both uh, very interesting dinosaurs, but we're gonna get right into it, starting with the Brachiosaurus. Now, there were a couple dinosaurs that were um, up uh, to be chosen for this one. I believe uh, there's this really cool th um, a dinosaur that was added into the series. And at this point, there's about four or five different long neck uh, type dinosaurs in the franchise. And uh, I just thought we'd go with the classic, you know, the Brachiosaurus, you can't go wrong. It's the iconic dinosaur of the franchise. The first time they see dinosaurs in the movies. And the first thing I realized I had to do with this thing was um, actually shrink its neck down because it was too tall for me to actually do any work on it. But I really like this. Um, most of these images are actually from uh, Jurassic World and Jurassic Park. So I'm not using uh, like different depictions of these dinosaurs for the most part. So a lot of these are from the franchise. Again, I wanted to have a secondary one just in case it didn't work the way I wanted it to, but I ultimately don't even end uh, up using the second Brachiosaurus. But um, I don't know, it was more of a practice to see if I could do this and make it look better and um, did two different styles here with this one. Uh, so this one I blended it in, the last one I kind of cropped it a little bit tighter. Um, I like how this one actually turned out in terms of the Photoshop, it looked better, um, but I ultimately shrank the neck even more. Now here's the main star in this video that I was talking about, the Therizinosaurus. Now they are interesting and I really love the way they did this dinosaur in this movie. It looks so cool. It's got that those feathers running down the back, but those big claws are what I'm interested in. So right away, just clip those out. The Therizinosaurus is interesting for because for a long time, um, they thought it was a predator, mainly because a lot of the theropod dinosaurs, uh, theropod dinosaurs being like T-Rex, raptors, albertosaurus, a lot of them are predators. And for a long time, they thought the Therizina was a predator with those big claws. But now we kind of see them as almost like giant ground slots in the sense that they would grab foliage and pull it down closer to themselves so that, um, you know, they could eat more vegetation. But they obviously use those claws for defense too. I mean, you definitely have to look at those things. Um, so it worked out, it actually lined up pretty well and uh, nicely. And I think that's because I'm using Jurassic World animals, Jurassic Park animals. Um, their design philosophy is very similar. So I was very easily able to place a lot of these parts onto the Brachiosaurus body. It was just about how we worked it. So you can see here, I mounted on the shoulder blades in a similar position to where the arms would be. Um, and I, right away, it just fit right into place, which is really cool. I love it when a Photoshop like that kind of comes together as you're doing it. You don't have to do a whole lot of effort to kind of make it fit. But this looks really sharp right off the bat. It looks a little front heavy, so I kind of tilt it back a little bit, but I eventually kind of fix that in my mind and add a little bit of weight to the back. That to me at least 
would balance it out. Um, I bulk up these arms a little bit. Um, this was interesting because this video um, was also lots of experimentation. I did lots of warping of things, which is something I don't typically do in these videos, but I was really happy with how it all turned out. I did a little fluffing because uh, Therizina is a very fluffy dinosaur. I do a little bit more fluffy fluffing later, but um, this is also the first instance of me changing the color of something. And that ended up being a huge pain in my butt, but we nailed that down. So right off the bat, uh, we moved to the Gallimimus. And I was excited for the Gallimimus because um, I think that's actually the one from Camp Cretaceous, the Gallimimus. But um, it's one of the fastest theropod dinosaurs. And again, much like the Therizina, is not a meat eater. It's kind of like a, a giant ostrich, if you will. And um, they're an iconic dinosaur from the franchise in the Jurassic Park series, when they kind of stampede over the hill and the T-Rex grabs one. Really cool scene. I always love that. But they're really fast, mobile animals. And I thought they're the perfect creature to be the hind legs for the Brachiosaurus. It all worked out. And uh, it's kind of like turkey legs, which is kind of reminiscent of the original Photoshop video that we did. Um, but I'm kind of messing around here. As you can see, I'd already picked the background for this one, which is very unusual for a lot of the Photoshops we do. But I think it worked out really nice because it helped me kind of set the scene a little bit. Um, but right away, we get those legs in really easy. And as you can see, this is all just coming together, coming together. There weren't a whole lot of things that were super hard to deal with, um, aside from getting colors and things like that right. Everything else just fell into place super naturally. I like the Gallimimus, um, or the Gallimimus. Everyone pronounces a lot of these differently. I'm pronouncing them uh, wrong for the most part, I believe. But um, I don't know. I'm a big fan of the franchise. I do love dinosaurs. I'm a big fan of paleo art watching some of the stuff that people create, bringing life into really just fossils and creating these cool creatures. And that's kind of what I was really trying to capture when I was doing this. I wanted this to look like something that would fit in in the Jurassic World universe in that it stuck with a lot of the, their design choices. So I know they don't do these Frankenstein monster th things in Jurassic World, like with the Indominus Rex and the Scorpius Rex and other beasties that have shown up in the franchise. But I don't know, I like the style and it looks cool because you can identify the parts that the animal came from. And this is my struggle with coloring things. And maybe someone who's watching knows a better way to do this, but I was really struggling getting the color right here. Um, I actually skip a lot of this in post-production. Um, so even though it looks like a couple seconds here, I actually labored on this for a while. And this is where I come to my solution, where I realize I can just open it up into another window, alter the color, and then copy it back in. And that ultimately looks way better. It matches the coloring on the underside of the Brachiosaurus, the top side of the Brachiosaurus, and it matches the arms of the Therizina. Now, this is an interesting choice uh, because while um, the Gallimimus was from the animated Jurassic Park series, uh, Camp Cretaceous, this is from Jurassic World Evolution, the video game. And I'm pretty sure this is actually from the first game as well. Um, so I wasn't really sure how this was gonna look. Um, and I was getting kind of lazy trying to crop this, but I only really wanted the big part, which was the turtle back kind of portion of the Ankylosaurus. Now the Ankylosaurus is not related to turtles. I believe they're actually in the same family as a Triceratops, as well as Stegosaurus. Those kind of dinosaurs are all in a similar family branch. Um, they, I could be wrong with the Stegosaurus in there, but I'm pretty sure uh, Ankylosaurus or Ankylosaurus are uh, pretty closely related to Triceratops. And uh, they have a lot of similarities. They eat a lot of the same food. Their mouths and skulls are shaped very similarly. It's almost like they just decided to put armor in different places. But that's obviously why I wanted this dinosaur. I wanted the armor portion of it. So um, looks pretty cool. And I'm really proud of a little thing that I did here to kind of make it look more natural. And uh, so, of course, we get the back on. We got to kind of blend it in or stretch it and morph it in a way that doesn't look awkward. So I cut it here, right? And then I rotate it. And the way that I did the cut and the way those last spikes work, it, it looks super flush. It actually turned out pretty sharp. Now, I don't ultimately end up using the tail part for this, but it does help me to extend the armor down the back of the Brachiosaurus's back. And this is what I really like. How I took these teeth from the side, turned them around, and I kind of added this jaggedness that kind of goes around the neck in a way like turtles kind of flare out around their neck. And I know that ankylosauruses aren't turtles, but still, I really liked the way that that turned out in the final product. So here, I cut that tail away, um, just because I wasn't actually even sure I was gonna use that end tail at that point. I thought I was gonna use the smaller image, but it looked like 
crap, to be honest with you. So I ultimately reverted back to the original image where it looked higher quality and everything just matched up with the tail and the textures and everything. I didn't have to change much. And I didn't want to change the color for this one because I wanted the shell to kind of stick out of uh, the armor to kind of stick out as its own thing. So you'd recognize, all right, this thing has armor. So uh, clip away some of that grass, the foliage that's left from the video game background. And I tried merging this in a bunch of different ways because I kind of wanted the tail to be pretty long but um, I kind of scrap that a little bit and find a better way to just make it look right. And this is what I was talking about uh, making it make sense for me because it's very front heavy, obviously, because the long neck, the wide chest. And I thought that having this big bulging boulder of a tail would help counterbalance this big beast as well as something else that we add later into the Photoshop. So right now, we move over to the Sinoceratops, and I thought it would be pretty easy just to uh, magic wand this and click it out, um, but it actually didn't end up being the case. Everything was really ch chunky, no matter how much I changed the tolerance. Um, I just ultimately decided that I could do it better. And, um, you know, I complain a lot about having to crop bird wings and antlers of like deer and stuff like that, but man, I'm glad dinosaurs are not around because if I was doing animal challenges with just dinosaurs, Oh my God, the amount of spikes and rough edges and all these things, it was so challenging to uh, get some of these looking as clean as they are. And I got pretty lucky that a lot of them were on white backgrounds or black backgrounds. Um, well, actually the black background is a pain in the butt later in this video too, but uh, this just worked out really nice. And it was nice to take my time. I have a history of screwing things up halfway through a crop. So I thought I would just reset and move on after I got a sizable chunk of it out move on to the more detailed stuff. I end up cleaning this inside up a little bit because I don't like how you can see so much of the background there. Um, but yeah, and I was really starting to think about uh, this at this point, um, where as I was carving this out, I was like, man, this is gonna be a really heavy head. And I'm worried that the neck is still too long on the Brachiosaurus, but I didn't want to take it away completely because I think that's what makes it recognizable as the dinosaur besides just using its body. But uh, as we made our way through these spines and spikes and all these lumps and bumps, uh, it definitely started to come out really nice. I didn't want to do super sharp bumps because I didn't feel like that was natural. Um, I didn't think they'd be super sharp in a lot of places. Maybe at the crucial points they'd be sharp, but I feel like they'd be worn down. You know what I mean? It's Jurassic World. They're out in the world. They don't have the medical protection that they might have had in the park, so they're in rough shape. So I got this head here. And like I said, looks kind of awkward on that super long neck, right? It looks like it's kind of draping down and I didn't really like that. So uh, ultimately, uh, I decided to shrink the neck now, but because I had this giant head, I didn't have to go through this whole thing of like shrinking and merging, but I did want to mix around with this uh, like new tool that I haven't really used a whole lot of, um, which is like the actual like warping tool. Uh, I do like kind of lighter warping with the other tools, but still this thing's head was so huge. It was sticking out of the canvas and I didn't like how it looked, but I wanted it to have a long neck. So I thought that that looked really good. And it kind of gave me vibes of Alien versus Predator, the queen, uh, the queen xenomorph. That's kind of what this gave me a vibe of, but um, the head worked out the way I wanted it to. And I messed with it a bit, um, but I don't think uh, I ultimately end up using the pterodactyl wings for this. I just go straight for the Quetzal Quetzalcoatl. And the Quetzal is a really interesting creature because they were basically flying giraffes. And the fact that they flew was kind of um, argued a little bit. They were huge. And they could have been an example of a species of animal that just grew so big that maybe it didn't need wings anymore, or it kept its wings, but it didn't use them for flight. Um, they used them for other purposes, for display purposes, almost like a, a peacock. It's really uncertain if these things flew because they would be massive and it would be quite a challenge for them to get up into the air. And how would they even take off in the first place, right? Some people think they launched themselves with their wings, like kind of jumped leapfrog style, but in this imagining, I like to imagine they flew in the same way that Jurassic World imagined that they flew. So I'm really excited to actually see this movie. I haven't seen it yet as of recording this, uh, all this stuff. So ah, this is just getting me super pumped. And if you haven't seen Jurassic World yet, I hope this gets you super pumped too. But you knew that I had to have wings on this beast. Even though I was happy with how it looked without the wings, I did want to add uh, that bit of flair. And I do keep the wings the same color that they are because I wanted it to kind of have this bold display where it's like, stay away from me, I'm dangerous. And maybe this 
hybrid doesn't use the wings to fly, but maybe it uses them more for balance because it's got its spindly legs. Uh, maybe it's like a threat display where it's like, mess with me, bro, I got giant red wings. But I thought it looked cool. It made it look like if it was running, uh, this is kind of a weird example, but like um, I'm thinking like Garchomp from Pokemon. He's like a shark dragon type thing. And it somehow flies by using its shark fins. I don't know, but uh, maybe it could balance it if it was really running or running up a hill. It could stick these wings out and it would help it maintain its balance. I'm trying to like really have these creatures, these Photoshop beasts make sense. You know, it's one thing to attach all these different parts but it's a, another thing entirely for it to not make sense at all, right? You can't have wings on something and, it, you know, expect it to fly. So I thought that this was really cool. And again, you know how wings are. They're a pain in my butt. So I spent a little bit of time messing with them just to get them right, changing their sizes, changing, um, you know, how they kind of look. And I settled on something that looks kind of sharp and dangerous too, which kind of, I like with the threat display idea. I think that that turned out really cool. So then we basically got the final dinosaur here with one thing that really kind of messes with me here because I was trying to change the background, of course, and we're gonna come back to the Sinoceratops because that's actually the thing that was the holdup. But I wanted this to kind of have the feeling of Jurassic World. Like this wasn't just, I think this is New York where this picture is. I could be completely wrong. But I noticed in a lot of their imaging, they've got this um, amber coloring to the posters. It makes it almost look like old timey. It, looks, it makes it look apocalyptic in its own unique take. And I thought, I was trying to set the scene, right? Like what if there was still a hybrid in this apocalyptic world? I don't know what the plot of the movie is, but they're kind of billing it as this environmental disaster. So is this one of those things where humanity has collapsed the world's ecosystems because dinosaurs now exist or is this just like a remnant from a lab somewhere and it's just wandering around the city people see it like that wasn't on InGen's list kind of thing like that and I mess with its width a little bit but um I'm really just focusing on the background here and I think I kind of capture what I'm looking for where I capture the feeling of the city being overtaken by nature without adding the nature elements. You know what I mean? I'm thinking games like The Last of Us, um, you know, any kind of games that take place in a post-apocalyptic world. And that was kind of my inspiration for this background. And I wanted it to kind of have some of the reds and the yellows that um, just make things look so pretty. There was a, a quick shot of the, the Russian beast from way back. And this is the Sinoceratops part that I was talking about. I was unsure if I wanted to keep the head as being green and maybe mute it a little bit more. I don't know, maybe you can tell me what you think and we could change it in post, but I ultimately decide to go with the green skull personally. Um, this is really cool. I saved a version of it that had the darker skull with the muted colors, um, as you just saw there. Um, but I kind of liked that the green kind of subtly matched with the armor, even if it was a little bit more green. And then I really started to enjoy the idea of the threat displays that we were talking about with the wings before. So I ultimately kept those brighter colors to keep it in. I'm curious what you think, if you think that the muted colors was better. Um, I almost forgot to go back to this part. This is uh, the Therizina, but sorry, I got derailed here. Um, but if you think that you like the more muted colors better, let me know in uh, the comments down below what you think is better. But um, back to the fluffing of the Therizina. We fluffed its arms up, making it look a bit more real, widened the dinosaur a bit. And then of course, just like the original Jurassic World that we did, we threw the logo in. Now I was figuring out where to put it. I decided ultimately bottom left was good. And uh, in the first Photoshop video we did, it was still at the park and you could see the trucks, the, the uh, old Jeeps in the kind of background on the rails from the first movie. And I thought, no, 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 this isn't a movie about the humans. This is a movie about the dinosaurs. So instead of having that, I thought that we would have the dinosaurs floating in the distance. And there we go, get some of these pinks in there. And it's got like these dark muted colors. I, I really like, I guess muted's not the way because they're kind of bright colors. I'm not very good at my uh, art jargon, but I'm figuring it out. I'm learning just as I'm learning how to Photoshop as we move on here. But we kind of got the final product at this point. You know, I merged some of the layers, make sure that the shadow uh, works and uh, just to kind of flesh out this environment a bit to kind of give it a bit of a, a, a presence that made it look a bit more violent, try to give it some more weight, some depth in the environment and uh, do the same thing with the logo so that it fits. And then ultimately, there you go. We made it to our final product here. And I 
was really happy with how this final product uh, looked. It was one of my favorite Photoshop videos that uh, I think we've done so far. And uh, I just overall really enjoyed the making of it, the process of it. I just sat down in my chair, did it in one sitting. It took me about two and a half hours actually to do this Photoshop video in terms of just recording the actual footage. So um, it was a lot of fun and I really enjoyed this video. And if you enjoyed the final product that we came up with this one, I would really appreciate it. You know, as Jurassic World Dominion is coming out today and it's super trending and all that stuff. And even if you're watching this far after that the movie has come out, I'd really appreciate it if you shared this one. I'm really proud of this video and I really like the way that it turned out. So if you enjoyed this video too, do me a favor, share it, like it, comment, tell me what you loved about this video. Tell me what you didn't like about this video. And if you have any suggestions, as always, for any future your Photoshop videos, I would love to hear from you, you know? So um, if there's something that comes to your mind, maybe it's an animal, a part of the world, I think we're gonna go back to our uh, mythical creatures from different countries at the next Photoshop video we do. But if there is something that stands out to you, I've gotten some great suggestions uh, from some uh, faithful viewers, um, like uh, trying to make creatures into other creatures or developing mythical creatures based on first-hand accounts, which I thought was a really cool idea. So um, definitely lots of good stuff coming up in the future. So I uh, thank you guys again so much for watching this video. I really enjoyed this one top to bottom. So uh, until the next video, thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe, share this video, like, comment. I'll say it again, but the most important thing is thank you so much for watching. I love you guys and peace out.